Don't do these five things that make you too unattractive stoicism. Change your thoughts and you change your world, Norman Vincent Peale once famously said. This powerful idea lies at the heart of stoicism and is pivotal to our discussion today on the Stoic in Your Life channel. As we explore life's journey, the aspiration to become our best selves can often be hindered by certain habits and behaviors that unknowingly make us less attractive. Today, we're diving deep into five specific habits that may be sabotaging your appeal. This exploration is not merely about identifying these behaviors, but understanding them profoundly and learning effective strategies to transform them. Are you ready to challenge these habits and embrace changes that will enhance your relationships and personal happiness? Let's embark on this journey of self-discovery together. If you're eager to start making these positive changes, comment below, share your thoughts and experiences, and join a community committed to growth and virtue. Let's learn, evolve, and thrive together with the timeless wisdom of Stoicism guiding us. What's the first habit you're ready to change? Let us know in the comments. 1. Bragging In today's fast-paced world where social media often dictates norms and self-worth is measured by likes and shares, it's crucial to revisit timeless wisdom that emphasizes true value and personal integrity. Stoicism a philosophy that advocates for self-control, humility, and personal growth, offers profound insights on why certain behaviors, such as bragging, can be detrimental to our character and how they can alienate us from others. This philosophy teaches us to find approval from within and to project a sense of confidence that doesn't rely on the validation of others. Bragging often appears as a loud declaration of one's achievements, screaming for attention, and admiration. It is seen by many as a necessity to establish one's worth in the eyes of peers. However, is this behavior truly a reflection of self-esteem or rather a mask for deep-seated insecurities? Consider the behavior of someone constantly highlighting their successes without context or humility. This can be off-putting, creating distance rather than fostering connection. Stoicism suggests that true confidence is quiet and self-assured, not requiring constant external validation to exist. Epictetus, a luminary in Stoic thought, teaches that what counts is not what happens to you but how you deal with it. This perspective is crucial in understanding why boastfulness is often seen as unattractive. It showcases a reactive rather than proactive approach to self-esteem, heavily reliant on others' perceptions rather than self-appraisal. Real confidence, according to Stoicism, is about acknowledging one's achievements without overshadowing others. It involves sharing successes in a way that uplifts and includes rather than segregates and alienates. Epictetus famously said, If you want to be loved, love. This simple yet profound advice encapsulates the Stoic belief in controlling one's actions and attitudes. By fostering virtues like discipline, courage, and humility, Qualities that remain constant regardless of external opinions, we cultivate a presence that is genuinely attractive because it is authentically grounded, not superficially constructed. How then can one apply these stoic principles to everyday life, particularly in an era where the lines between genuine self-worth and external validation are often blurred? It starts by developing an internal metric for self-assessment. Recognize your accomplishments, certainly but do so with a mindset that appreciates the contributions of others. Reflect on instances where humility in others made a lasting positive impression on you. It's likely that their demeanor enhanced their appeal significantly. Marcus Aurelius, another Stoic philosopher, offers a timeless piece of wisdom. The best revenge is not to be like your enemy. Applying this to our context, we see that eschewing the bragging and boastfulness often exhibited in competitive environments allows us to stand out as principled and composed individuals. In sum, embracing stoicism involves a profound reassessment of how we perceive success and interact with our peers. It invites us to cultivate a strong, independent sense of self that does not fluctuate with the vicissitudes of societal approval. 
This not only makes us more attractive as individuals, but also enriches our relationships and enhances our overall life satisfaction. As we navigate the complexities of modern life, let us strive to embody the virtues that have stood the test of time. Those that define our actions not by the fleeting judgments of others but by our steadfast commitment to living a principled and meaningful life. This is the essence of true attractiveness, a calm, composed demeanor that resonates with confidence and humility in equal measure. 2. Reactivity Stoic philosophy, which champions self control and reasoned thought, teaches us a crucial life skill, reactivity, or the tendency to react impulsively to situations without thorough consideration, is a trait that can detract significantly from our attractiveness and effectiveness. Consider the wisdom of Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher who endured the hardships of slavery before rising to prominence through his indomitable calm and deep understanding. He famously stated, What matters is not what happens to you, but how you react to it. This insight forms the cornerstone of Stoic thought. While we cannot control external events, we have absolute power over our responses to them. Reflect on this the next time you find yourself in a challenging situation. How do you respond? Does your reaction help you maintain your dignity and purpose? Or does it contribute to chaos? Think about a modern scenario. You're in a high-stress meeting and suddenly things don't go as planned. Someone drops the ball. The blame game starts, and the room heats up. Now picture yourself maintaining composure, addressing the issue logically, and steering the conversation towards solutions rather than problems. How do you think your colleagues would view you? Marcus Aurelius, another towering figure in Stoic philosophy and a Roman emperor, faced relentless pressure both on the battlefield and in governance. Yet, he is celebrated not for his military exploits or administrative policies as much as for his ability to remain calm in the face of adversity. His meditations provide timeless reflections on maintaining peace within oneself amidst external chaos. Why, then, is losing control seen as unattractive? When someone reacts emotionally and without restraint in a difficult situation, it often leads to a poor first impression. Uncontrolled reactions are seen as a sign of weakness rather than strength, reflecting a lack of self-mastery that is highly valued in both personal and professional realms. Emotional reactivity can alienate others, as people generally gravitate towards those who can provide stability and security, qualities that are rooted in a calm demeanor. So how can you apply Stoic principles to cultivate a more attractive presence? Start by observing your reactions in various situations. Ask yourself, am I acting out of impulse or thoughtful consideration? Implement a brief pause before responding to anything significant. This small habit can transform your interactions profoundly. By choosing to respond rather than react, you embody the stoic ideal that true control comes from within. To sum up, the essence of what makes someone genuinely attractive and effective in life lies in their ability to maintain composure and think logically under pressure. This lesson, derived from the teachings of Stoic philosophers like Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius, remains as relevant today as it was in ancient times. Embrace this wisdom, and you'll find that not only will your interactions improve, but you'll also lead a more fulfilling and respected life. So, next time you face a challenge, remember, it's not the situation that defines you, but your response to it. How will you choose to react? The Stoics teach us that it is not external events that shape our lives, but rather our responses to them. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and a Stoic philosopher, famously said, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This quote underscores the essence of Stoicism and offers a valuable lesson in leadership and personal growth. By maintaining our composure and responding thoughtfully regardless of the circumstances, we command respect and emerge as true leaders in both our personal and professional lives. 
Now let's think about how we can apply these stoic principles to become less reactive and more proactive. It begins with self-awareness, a critical stoic practice. Ask yourself, how do I typically react in stressful situations? Do I lash out or do I retreat? What triggers these responses? Identifying these patterns is the first step towards gaining control over them. The goal here is not to suppress your emotions, but to manage them in a way that aligns with your core values and the demands of the situation, thus ensuring that your responses are always considered and appropriate. Epictetus, another revered Stoic philosopher, offers this profound advice. Don't just talk about your philosophy, live it. This statement challenges us to not only reflect on Stoic teachings, but to embody them in our everyday actions. By embracing a philosophy of calm and measured responses, you enhance your allure and project an aura of confidence and reliability. This approach does not entail hiding your emotions, but rather understanding them so profoundly that you can express them in a manner that is constructive rather than destructive. So how can you practically integrate Stoicism into your daily life to make it impactful? Start by implementing a simple yet powerful technique. The pause. Before reacting to any negative stimulus, take a moment to breathe and reflect. This pause allows you to assess the situation calmly and respond in a way that is both thoughtful and assertive. Over time, this practice will help you develop a habit of measured responses, significantly improving your interactions and relationships. Furthermore, Consider how these stoic practices can be applied not just in your personal life but also in the workplace. Imagine you are in a meeting and a controversial issue arises. Instead of reacting hastily and potentially escalating the situation, you choose to respond with poise and precision. By doing so, you not only resolve the issue more effectively, but also set a standard for others to follow, enhancing your leadership and influence. To wrap up, the principles of Stoicism are incredibly relevant and beneficial in our contemporary lives. They teach us that while we cannot control every external event, we can master our reactions to them, which in turn shapes our destiny. By cultivating a calm demeanor and responding thoughtfully to every situation, we not only gain the respect and admiration of those around us, but also lead a more fulfilling and purposeful life. Now, I'd like to ask you, how will you apply these stoic principles in your next challenging situation to transform your reactions into thoughtful responses? Consider this. What if in a moment of potential conflict you chose to respond with empathy rather than anger? Or, when a sudden desire grips you, you pause to contemplate its long-term impact on your life? Such shifts from impulsivity to mindfulness might seem minor but their impact on your life can be profound. This approach doesn't just minimize regrets. It enhances your attractiveness to others by showcasing your capacity for understanding and patience. Now, imagine applying this stoic reflection in everyday scenarios, such as a disagreement at work or a stressful family situation. Instead of reacting with irritation or frustration, which might escalate the problem, responding with a calm demeanor can diffuse tension and lead to more constructive outcomes. It shows you as someone who commands not just personal respect, but also the helm of leadership, capable of steering situations toward resolution rather than conflict. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, advised, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. His words resonate today underscoring that our greatest influence lies in our response to life's challenges. Reflective practice also boosts your happiness and aids in achieving your personal goals. By reacting less impulsively, you align more closely with your long-term aspirations, leading to actions that are considered and in harmony with your deeper objectives. Seneca, another Stoic sage, once said, Hang on to your youthful enthusiasms. You'll be able to use them better when you're older. This advice encourages us to channel our initial reactions into energies that fuel, rather than foil, our ambitions.
But how can one cultivate such poised reflection? Start by recognizing the triggers that prompt your reactions. Is it stress, fear, or perhaps misunderstanding? Once identified, address these triggers with the Stoic method of reflection. This doesn't mean suppressing your emotions. Rather, it involves understanding them deeply so that your actions are governed by wisdom, not whims. Reflecting before reacting helps maintain your inner peace and enhances your decision-making capabilities, ensuring that your actions are beneficial not just to you, but also to those around you. The practice of turning reaction into reflection does not only serve to improve how others perceive you, but enriches your own life experience, allowing for a richer, more contented existence. It encourages a life where challenges are met with composure and potential conflicts turn into opportunities for growth and understanding. The wisdom of Epictetus comes to mind here. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. These words serve as a guiding principle for anyone looking to adopt a more stoic approach to life's unpredictabilities. As we face daily uncertainties and swift changes, the ability to respond effectively is crucial. Quick, knee-jerk reactions might offer instant relief or satisfaction, but thoughtful, measured responses pave the way for lasting success and respect, both personally and professionally. How are you managing your reactions? What strategies have you found effective in applying stoic principles to everyday challenges? Share your experiences and insights. Engaging with these age-old philosophies can transform not only how you are perceived by the world, but also how you perceive and interact with the world around you, leading to a life that is not only successful but also deeply fulfilling. If you've watched up to this point, it's clear you're dedicated to refining yourself and avoiding those traits that make you less attractive. Drop a comment below with Elevate to affirm your commitment to high standards and personal growth. Stick around. More wisdom on leveraging Stoicism to enhance your life is coming up soon. 3. Not having any goals Stoicism teaches that true ambition is not about reaching the peaks of external success, but about deepening our inner growth and refining our character. It's about how we align our desires with our moral values and how we cultivate virtues like discipline, integrity, and self-control in every action we take. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher who navigated the treacherous currents of Roman politics, profoundly critiqued the superficial pursuits of status and power, asking, what good are lots of books and libraries if the owner can't take in even one principle and make it his own? This rhetorical question invites us to reflect on our own pursuits. Are we accumulating achievements and accolades that hold no true value to our inner development? Or are we genuinely enriching ourselves with wisdom and virtue? Consider a modern scenario. A successful business person who has climbed the corporate ladder quickly, but feels an inner emptiness despite their outward success. They might start questioning the purpose of their ambitions when they realize that their achievements haven't contributed to their personal happiness or moral growth. This realization could be the turning point where they begin to set goals that are not just about advancing their career, but about becoming a better person, perhaps by mentoring others, engaging in community service, or simply dedicating time to personal development. Now, ask yourself, when was the last time you felt truly fulfilled by an accomplishment? Was it the external praise that uplifted you, or the knowledge that you had grown in a meaningful way? If your goals are solely focused on external validation, they might not be serving your deeper purpose. Stoicism doesn't discourage ambition. Rather, it guides us to ensure that our ambitions serve our personal growth and moral values. The journey to redefining ambition begins with introspection. Start by examining the motivations behind your goals. Are they driven by societal expectations or do they resonate deeply with your personal values? Every step you take towards a goal should be a step towards becoming the person you aspire to be, not just the role you seek to fill. By adopting a stoic approach to ambition, you not only transform your own life but potentially inspire others to rethink their paths as well. 
This shift from chasing fleeting accolades to cultivating lasting virtues is what leads to true satisfaction and a legacy of integrity. As Marcus Aurelius, another great Stoic, once said, Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. This powerful directive challenges us to live up to the ideals we admire, turning our ambitions into channels for personal excellence and ethical living. So, as we move forward, let us each reflect on our ambitions. Are they pushing us toward genuine self-improvement? Or are they merely propelling us along a superficial race for more? How can we ensure that our goals lead us not just to success in the eyes of the world, but to a deeper sense of fulfillment and ethical integrity? Share your thoughts and experiences in pursuing ambitions that resonate with your core values. Let's engage in a dialogue that celebrates ambitions that are not only about rising high, but also about delving deep into the essence of who we truly are and aspire to be. Epictetus, a seminal figure in Stoicism, simplifies this profound concept into a practical axiom. First, tell yourself what kind of person you want to be, and then do what you need to do. This directive challenges us to first envision the virtuous individual we aspire to become and subsequently mold our actions to embody these ideals. It's about fostering qualities within ourselves that resonate with our deepest values rather than pursuing superficial markers of success. This form of ambition, therefore, isn't about reaching a finish line adorned with external rewards, but about evolving continually towards personal excellence. The Stoic view on ambition involves a profound redefinition. It's about building resilience and enhancing oneself through persistent self-reflection and personal development. In a world obsessed with the outward signs of success, Stoicism asks poignant questions. Are these pursuits truly enhancing your life? Or are they merely complicating it? Are you chasing mere shadows? ephemeral and devoid of substance instead of cultivating genuine virtues that stand the test of time. Marcus Aurelius, another towering Stoic thinker and a Roman emperor, eloquently expressed this idea when he remarked, The only wealth you will keep forever is the wealth you have given away. His perspective suggests that true ambition extends beyond personal gain and includes contributions to the well-being of others. It posits that the most enduring form of wealth is found not in what we accumulate for ourselves, but in what we share for the common good. This perspective doesn't just elevate our sense of purpose, it also enhances our appeal as compassionate and community-oriented individuals. Now, let's reflect on this. How does this stoic interpretation of ambition resonate with your personal goals? Are your ambitions serving a higher purpose, or merely feeding the ego? What steps can you take to align your aspirations more closely with the Stoic ideal of virtue and service? Engage in this reflection not just as an intellectual exercise, but as a practical guide to reorienting your life's goals. By embracing Stoic principles, you not only enrich your own life, but also contribute positively to those around you, fostering a legacy that transcends material success. This shift in perspective about ambition is not merely philosophical, but deeply practical. It encourages us to live lives marked by meaningful achievements that truly resonate with who we are and aspire to be, rather than being driven by fleeting desires or societal pressures. As you navigate the complexities of life, challenge yourself to form ambitions that reflect the true wealth of generosity, resilience, and virtue. In doing so, you cultivate a life, not just of success, but of significance. What will your first step be towards this kind of stoic ambition? Share your thoughts, and let's discuss how we can support each other in this journey towards a more purposeful and fulfilling life. This approach to life resonates deeply with stoic philosophy which teaches us that the true purpose of ambition is to cultivate a life marked by virtue, wisdom, and genuine happiness. As the Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, our plans miscarry because they have no aim. When a man does not know what harbor he is making for, no wind is the right wind. In modern life, 
Many individuals experience a sense of aimlessness, not because they lack ambition, but because they lack clear goals that resonate with their innermost values. Setting precise objectives provides not only direction and motivation, but also a framework through which one can measure personal growth and success. It guides our actions and decisions, ensuring that each step taken is purposeful and impactful. Without such clarity, it's all too easy to succumb to the chaos of everyday demands, losing sight of one's deeper aspirations. Achieving these goals brings a profound sense of accomplishment. This isn't just about ticking boxes or achieving societal benchmarks of success. It's about the personal fulfillment that comes from knowing you're progressing towards your true potential. Every milestone reached is a celebration of the journey and the effort invested, reinforcing the joy and pride found in personal growth. However, the journey towards these milestones can often be fraught with challenges. Here, the Stoic practice of endurance comes into play. Stoicism teaches that obstacles are not impediments but opportunities to fortify one's character. As Marcus Aurelius noted, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. This mindset instills a resilience that drives one to persevere, maintaining focus and momentum even in the face of adversity. Linking these philosophical insights to modern life, it becomes evident that setting and pursuing well-defined goals is not an act of selfish ambition, but a stepping stone to a richer, more interconnected existence. These goals act as conduits through which one can channel efforts not only for personal advancement but for the betterment of society as a whole. As we each strive towards our individual aspirations, we contribute to a larger narrative of progress and communal good. Therefore, let us choose to view our ambitions not as mere endpoints or trophies to be collected, but as means to enrich our lives and the lives of others. In doing so, we weave a tapestry of collective achievement and shared joy, thereby fulfilling the true promise of Stoic ambition, a life not measured by accomplishments but by the service and virtue we share along the way. This is the path to not only achieving success, but also living a life that is deeply fulfilling and profoundly impactful. Goals aren't just milestones on a chart. They are the fuel for your journey towards becoming a better version of yourself. They compel us to acquire new skills, gather new information, and experience things we never would have otherwise. Imagine living a life without these signposts. It's easy to see how one could remain stagnant, missing out on invaluable opportunities to grow. Let's talk about how goals give our lives both meaning and direction. They do more than just fill our days with tasks. They imbue our daily actions with purpose, leading us towards a life that is not just lived but cherished. Picture a life where each day contributes to a larger picture of who you want to become. This clarity transforms how we plan and tackle our days, keeping us energized and focused, even when the road gets tough. Without such goals, it's all too common to find ourselves drifting through life, unclear about where we're heading, which often leads to feelings of frustration and disappointment. Let me share a story that illustrates this perfectly. Consider the tale of Michael, a software developer who felt lost in the routine of his daily work. Every day seemed the same until he decided to set a personal goal to contribute to an open source project. This goal did more than just add a task to his to-do list. It reignited his passion for coding and innovation. He not only contributed valuable code, but also connected with a community of like-minded individuals which broadened his professional network and skill set. Michael's story is a testament to how setting goals can dramatically transform ordinary life into a thrilling adventure of continuous growth and unexpected opportunities. Now, why is setting goals so crucial for your happiness and success? They provide us with a lens through which to view our choices, a roadmap that guides our efforts, and a yardstick by which we measure our progress. They shape our lives in profound ways, turning everyday actions into steps towards personal fulfillment and professional success. Without clear goals, we risk meandering through life, directionless and unfulfilled. In light of this, think about what areas of your life could benefit from clearer goals. 
What is it that you aspire to achieve or become? Set these goals with passion and pursue them with all the vigor you can muster. Remember, the essence of our journey lies not in the destinations we reach, but in the growth we experience along the way. As you set your goals, ask yourself, how will these goals help me grow? What new skills will I learn? How will they enrich my life and the lives of those around me? In conclusion, Setting goals is not just about achieving targets, but about pushing your boundaries, learning continuously, and living life to its fullest. It's about making each day count and moving steadily towards a future you have envisioned for yourself. Let these goals be your guide, your motivators, and your reasons to wake up excited every morning. Dive into life with clear intentions and watch as your world expands in incredible ways. Remember. A life rich with purpose and progress is not only more fulfilling, but also a testament to the power of living with intention. So, set your goals, embrace the challenges, and enjoy the journey of personal evolution. Thank you all for tuning into today's video. We're eager to hear what you've learned or how you relate to the topics we discussed. Can you share any personal experiences or insights you've gained from our content? If you're unsure what to comment, perhaps start by mentioning something that you found particularly interesting or useful. Your contributions not only help us improve, but also enrich the learning experience for the entire community. Let's start the conversation in the comments below. 4. Needing something This independence is not only liberating but also inherently attractive, fostering a charisma that draws others to us naturally, rather than us having to seek them out. Consider the story of Epictetus, who despite being born into the harsh conditions of slavery, ascended to become a revered Stoic philosopher. His life and teachings underscore the vital importance of emotional and psychological self-sufficiency. Epictetus famously asserted, Freedom is the only worthwhile goal in life, because it lets us ignore things that are out of our control. Reflect on this profound statement. It urges us to consider whether we are too dependent on others' validation to shape our self-esteem. Are we allowing external opinions to dictate our happiness? His perspective invites us to reassess our own tendencies towards neediness. How often do you find yourself seeking affirmation from others to feel valued or appreciated? It's worth pondering how this neediness might be impacting your relationships and your personal appeal. Stoicism invites us to embrace a sense of inner approval and autonomy, which not only strengthens our emotional fortitude, but also enhances our appeal to others. By fostering a robust sense of self that does not waver with the opinions of others, we can achieve a true form of freedom. As Marcus Aurelius, another monumental figure in Stoicism, once said, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This principle can revolutionize the way we interact with the world and ourselves. So I pose this question to you. How much of your happiness and self-worth are you placing in the hands of others? And what steps can you begin to take today to reclaim that power? ensuring that your contentment and self-esteem are governed from within, by your own standards and for your own well-being. Engaging with these questions could be your first step toward a more attractive, stoic-inspired independence. Consider the scenario where one person in a relationship heavily relies on the other for emotional support or validation. This dependence can create a burden, making the relationship feel less like a partnership and more like a caretaker scenario. People are generally drawn to those who exhibit self-confidence and autonomy. It's not just about being attractive, it's about being respected and valued as an individual. Reflecting on the wisdom of Seneca, we are reminded that if you really want to get away from the things that bother you, you need to be a different person, not in a different place. This powerful insight urges us to cultivate our inner strength rather than seeking external approval. How, then, can we apply Stoic principles to overcome neediness? 
the first step is to understand the roots of your self-esteem. Ask yourself, is your self-worth derived primarily from others' perceptions, or is it grounded in your own achievements and the qualities you genuinely value in yourself? By shifting our focus from external validation to internal validation, we not only foster a stronger sense of self, but also become more inherently appealing to others. Seneca's tumultuous life, filled with political intrigue and exile, exemplifies that stability and peace must originate from within, not from our external circumstances. Likewise, Marcus Aurelius, in his meditations, emphasized the control we have over our minds regardless of external events. You are in charge of your own thoughts and not the events that happen around you. Realize this, and you will find strength. This principle is crucial for maintaining our dignity and attractiveness, regardless of the challenges we face. In modern life, where external factors are often unpredictable and beyond our control, the stoic practice of focusing on our internal responses becomes even more relevant. By mastering our emotions and reactions, we ensure that our self-esteem and confidence are not at the mercy of external circumstances. This not only makes us more attractive as individuals, but also equips us to handle life's challenges with grace. So as we consider the path forward, ask yourself, how much of your self-worth is currently tied to the approval of others? What steps can you start taking today to build a more resilient, self-sufficient you? Engaging with these questions is your first step towards embracing a stoic-inspired independence that not only enhances your attractiveness, but also enriches your life experience. Remember, the key to lasting appeal and personal satisfaction lies in your ability to maintain autonomy and inner strength. Let this understanding guide you as you navigate the complexities of relationships and personal development in the latter half of life. Adopting Stoicism and its virtue of self-sufficiency can indeed be transformative, steering you towards a life that is not only more peaceful, but also more fulfilling. Stoicism doesn't advocate for emotional isolation. Rather, it champions the strengthening of your emotional core. This robust foundation allows you to engage with others not out of necessity, but from a desire to foster mutual growth. When you connect with people because you choose to, not because you need to, every relationship becomes an opportunity for personal and collective development. Let's tackle this crucial shift. Build your inner fortress. Make it the wellspring of your self-esteem rather than constantly seeking approval from outside sources. This fundamental change will not only enhance your attractiveness, but also lead to healthier, more balanced interactions. Embrace the stoic practice of self-sufficiency and observe the remarkable changes it brings to your life. As you grow less needy and more self-assured, you'll notice an improvement, not just in your relationships, but in your overall life satisfaction as well. But how does this look in modern life? Consider the story of Alex, a colleague who always seemed to be in a whirlwind of drama, his happiness contingent on the approval of our peers. When he embraced stoicism, he started focusing on developing his character and capabilities. Gradually, his need for validation diminished. He became more composed and confident, and this change did not go unnoticed. His relationships at work and beyond began to thrive because people were drawn to his newfound independence and strength. Now, reflect on your own life. How much of your self-worth is tied to others' perceptions? What steps can you begin to take today to cultivate a stronger, more independent you? Engaging with these questions is your first step towards a Stoic-inspired independence that not only enhances your allure, but also enriches your life. Remember, the key to attractive self-sufficiency lies not in detachment, but in developing a self that is complete and content in itself. What will your first step be toward building this new, resilient version of yourself? Each of us carries a unique set of needs shaped by personal experiences, cultural background, and societal norms. The concept of needing something threads through every facet of our lives, influencing our decisions, behaviors, and aspirations, whether these needs are tangible or perceived. By gaining a deeper understanding of what drives our actions and societal dynamics at large, 
we can begin to unravel the motives behind human behavior and societal progress. From the essential requirements for survival to the sophisticated desires that propel innovation and advancement, acknowledging our needs is the gateway to fulfillment. But how do you start this journey toward self-sufficiency and emotional strength? It begins with self-awareness. Take a moment to reflect on your own needs. Are they primarily physical, or do they skew more towards emotional and psychological? How do these needs affect your daily decisions and long-term goals? Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, once said, Freedom is the only worthy goal in life. He believed that this freedom comes from within, from understanding and mastering our own needs rather than being enslaved by them. His teachings encourage us to look inward for satisfaction, reinforcing the idea that true independence is not about isolation, but about being self-sufficient. As you consider these ideas, I invite you to ponder, what steps can you take today to recognize and fulfill your own needs independently? How can this journey towards understanding your needs enhance your emotional strength and personal freedom? Share your thoughts and plans in the comments. We'd love to engage with your experiences and insights as you embark on this path of self-discovery and growth. Remember, the journey to self-sufficiency is not a solo endeavor, but a shared human experience enriched by our collective insights and support. What will your first step be? Unmet needs can provoke unhealthy behaviors and coping strategies that jeopardize our overall health and relationships. Recognizing the effects of these unmet needs not only sheds light on the importance of robust support systems, but also underscores the necessity for proactive measures to safeguard our well-being. This understanding can be a pivotal turning point in how you manage your personal and professional life. Abraham Maslow, a renowned psychologist, developed a model known as Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, which organizes human needs into a pyramid. At the base are fundamental physiological needs like food and shelter, while the pinnacle is occupied by self-actualization, which represents the fulfillment of one's potential. This framework is crucial as it helps us prioritize our needs and understand the motivations behind our behaviors. For instance, without a stable foundation of basic needs, Striving for higher-level aspirations can become an uphill battle. Moreover, distinguishing between needs and wants is vital for making informed decisions and effectively allocating resources. Wants, influenced often by personal desires or societal pressures, don't always align with our essential requirements for survival and well-being. This distinction is particularly challenging in consumer-driven societies where advertising and social norms can blur the lines between what we genuinely need and what we are conditioned to desire. So, how can you apply these insights to enhance your life? First, take a moment to evaluate your own needs. Are you prioritizing the foundational aspects of your well-being, or are you caught up in the pursuit of desires that might not be essential? Reflecting on this, can help you realign your priorities and focus on what truly matters. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher, once said, Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. This wisdom is particularly relevant here. It suggests that the path to satisfaction involves a focus on fulfilling real needs rather than succumbing to fleeting wants. As you move forward, consider how you can better meet your own needs and support those around you in meeting theirs. What strategies can you employ to ensure your actions are aligned with your true necessities? How can your understanding of needs versus wants guide you in making choices that not only fulfill you, but also contribute to your long-term happiness and success? In conclusion, embracing a deeper comprehension of your needs and wants, and differentiating between the two, is more than just an exercise in self-reflection. It's a fundamental step towards a more fulfilled and balanced life. What will be your next step in this journey to ensure your needs are met, paving the way for a healthier, more contented existence? Engage with these questions and let them guide your decisions, fostering a life that is not only successful on the outside, but deeply satisfying on the inside. 
Understanding the nuanced ways in which people's needs evolve reveals the intricate link between individual aspirations, societal structures, and the pursuit of happiness. It's about recognizing that fulfilling these needs isn't merely a personal journey, but a communal one, necessitating empathy, kindness, and proactive support. When we create spaces where everyone's needs are acknowledged and valued, we cultivate an atmosphere where growth and happiness can flourish. Consider the impact of such an environment in a modern workplace scenario. Imagine a company that doesn't just focus on output and profits, but also invests in creating a culture of autonomy and relatedness among its employees. Here, workers are not only given tasks, but are also provided with opportunities to master their roles and connect meaningfully with their colleagues. Such a setting not only enhances productivity, but also contributes to the well-being and satisfaction of every employee, leading to a more harmonious and effective workplace. So, how does this translate into actionable steps for you? How can you create or seek out environments that prioritize these deeper aspects of fulfillment in your own life, whether at work, in relationships, or within your community? What changes can you implement to ensure that your actions and surroundings resonate more with your core needs and those of the people around you? Reflect on these questions and consider the value of building an existence where fulfillment comes not from superficial achievements but from a profound connection with your life's work and the people within your sphere. As you ponder these ideas, ask yourself, what can I do to foster an environment that nurtures not just the basic but also the psychological and emotional needs of myself and others? How can I contribute to creating a space where every individual feels seen, appreciated, and encouraged to grow? In closing, remember that satisfaction and fulfillment are multifaceted, extending beyond mere wants and encompassing a broader spectrum of needs that are essential for a healthy, well-rounded life. By understanding and addressing these needs, not only do you enhance your own life, but you also contribute to the well-being and happiness of those around you forging a path to a more fulfilled and contented community. What will your role be in this transformative journey? Thank you for joining today's video. Before we dive deeper, I want to take a moment to thank each of you for being part of our vibrant community. Your presence truly enriches our discussions. Feel free to share your thoughts or personal experiences in the comments. If you're not sure what to say, a simple, I'm a newbie if you're new here, or I am stoic if you've been with us for a while, will do just fine. Your engagement not only shows us you're here, but also greatly motivates our team. Now let's continue on this journey together, shall we? 5. Using Self-Deprecating Humor Self-deprecating humor is a subtle art that when mastered, can make you remarkably approachable and relatable. It involves poking fun at oneself, highlighting personal flaws, weaknesses, or even those not-so-glorious moments, to elicit laughter. This type of humor can serve as a bridge, connecting you with others by demonstrating your humility and openness. However, it's crucial to wield this tool wisely. As the Stoic philosopher Epictetus once advised, no, First who you are and then adorn yourself accordingly. This echoes the importance of self-awareness in humor. When engaging in self-deprecating humor, context is everything. It's most appropriate and well-received in casual settings among friends or in light-hearted moments. Here, it can break down barriers and forge a quick connection. But be cautious. There are topics that should remain off-limits to avoid turning a laugh into discomfort. It's also vital to maintain a balance. While self-deprecation can endear others to you, overdoing it can have the opposite effect, eroding your self-respect and leading others to view you as less capable or worthy. As Mark Twain aptly put it, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. In the realm of humor, this means starting with understanding the line between playful self-criticism and self-demolition. The effectiveness of this style of humor can be profound. Used judiciously, it can diffuse tension, smooth over disagreements, and enhance your likability. It shows you don't take yourself too seriously, 
which can be a breath of fresh air in today's highly competitive world. However, it's a tightrope walk that requires you to be attuned to the reactions of those around you. Moderation is key. Know when a light touch is enough to bring down walls without undermining your own stature. For modern men, navigating the balance of self-deprecating humor is particularly poignant. In an era where every flaw can be magnified, the ability to laugh at oneself is invaluable. It humanizes you in a world often too focused on perfection. As you move through life, remember the words of Winston Churchill. A joke is a very serious thing. Let this guide how you use humor not just to entertain, but to connect meaningfully with those around you, enhancing both your personal and professional relationships. From the jests of court jesters in medieval times to modern stand-up comedy routines, this style of humor holds a unique allure that brings people closer together, creating connections through shared laughter at our own expense. It's a delicate art, balancing humility with confidence, which when done right can enhance your charm and approachability in both social settings and professional environments. Imagine yourself at a networking event where the air is thick with the slight tension of first meetings and the eager buzz of potential connections. You step into a small circle, and with a light-hearted quip about your not-so-stellar golf skills, the group chuckles, and just like that, the ice breaks. This moment of vulnerability shows you're human and approachable, drawing others to you. It's in these instances that self-deprecating humor shines, serving as a social lubricant that eases the stiffness of initial interactions. However, there's a fine line between using self-deprecating humor to your advantage and overdoing it. If you find yourself always the butt of your jokes, it could instead signal low self-esteem, potentially making you appear less attractive to others. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic emperor known for his wisdom, advised, The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. If your humor consistently undercuts your own value, it might be time to reflect on why you feel the need to do so, and whether it's truly serving you well. This balance is crucial in our modern lives, where perceptions are quickly formed and hard to shake. In the workplace, for example, while self-deprecating humor can make you seem more relatable and down-to-earth, using it excessively can undermine your authority and professionalism. How, then, can you ensure that your humor brings people in rather than pushing them away? The key lies in moderation and timing. Sharing a laugh about your morning mishaps can be endearing. However, continually highlighting your weaknesses in every situation may not be. What's more, using self-deprecating humor effectively requires a deep understanding of your audience. What is humorous in one culture or group might not be in another. It's about reading the room and knowing when a light self-directed joke will add to the conversation or when it might fall flat. So, how often do you find yourself using self-deprecating humor? Is it a shield to deflect deeper insecurities? Or is it a tool you use sparingly to connect and comfort those around you? As you reflect on these questions, consider the ways in which this type of humor affects your relationships and self-perception. The wisdom of the Stoics reminds us that self-awareness is the first step towards personal growth and genuine interactions. By mastering the art of self-deprecating humor, you not only enhance your social toolkit, but also learn to laugh at yourself without diminishing your self-worth. This skill, when developed with thoughtfulness and care, can lead to richer, more authentic connections. So next time you joke about yourself, Remember to do so with the same respect and kindness you would offer to others. In doing so, you'll find that this type of humor can indeed be a powerful ally in navigating the complexities of human relationships and self-acceptance. While self-deprecating humor can temporarily ease social tensions and make you appear more approachable, it's a double-edged sword. Overuse of this type of humor can morph into a harmful habit, gradually undermining your self-esteem rather than enhancing your likability. Stoicism, with its emphasis on resilience and authenticity, provides insightful guidance on navigating the complexities of humor. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once stated, What bothers us is not what happens to us, but our thoughts about what happens.
This perspective is particularly relevant when we consider why we might use self-deprecating humor. Are we genuinely trying to amuse and connect with others, or are we voicing our insecurities under the guise of humor? Epictetus taught that our identity should not be dependent on others' perceptions, but should be rooted in our own self-respect and confidence. This foundational principle challenges us to reflect on the underlying intentions of our jokes about ourselves. How, then, can we apply Stoic principles to ensure that our humor serves us well and does not chip away at our self-worth? The first step is self-awareness. Recognizing whether our humor is a defense mechanism masking our insecurities or a strategic tool to enhance social interactions. To harness humor effectively, according to Stoic teachings, we must be mindful of its impact not only on ourselves but also on those around us. It's about striking a balance where our humor lifts spirits without lowering our self-regard. Imagine the impact of transforming our approach to humor from self-deprecation to self-affirmation. Instead of highlighting flaws and mistakes, what if our humor reflected our strengths and the absurdity of human follies in general? This shift requires courage and a strong sense of self, qualities that Stoicism encourages us to develop. So, ask yourself, what am I really trying to achieve with my humor? Is it to connect genuinely with others, or am I using it to shield myself from genuine connection and vulnerability? Each joke we make at our own expense is an opportunity to either reinforce our insecurities or to challenge them and grow stronger in our social interactions and personal reflections. Reflecting on the Stoic approach, we come to understand that humor, when used wisely, is not just a tool for social ease, but a means to reflect our deepest values and beliefs. It becomes clear that a well-placed joke can do more than just make others laugh. It can highlight our humanity and our ability to face life's challenges with a smile. Therefore, as we navigate the delicate balance of humor, let us strive to use it in a way that respects both ourselves and our audience. Ultimately, the practice of self-deprecating humor should be approached with caution and mindfulness. As you move forward, consider how you can use humor to reflect the best parts of your character and life philosophy. How can your humor be a bridge to deeper relationships rather than a moat that separates you from genuine self-esteem and connection? These are questions worth pondering as we aim to live lives that are not only resilient and honest, as the Stoics would have us do, but also joyfully humorous. But have you ever stopped to consider how this kind of humor might be affecting your relationships and your self-perception? What if, instead of poking fun at your flaws, you highlighted the quirky, amusing aspects of your personality. This shift in focus could fundamentally change not only how others perceive you, but also how you view yourself. If you're aiming for a life that's both more fulfilling and successful, it's worth exploring some stoic wisdom on embracing calm and accepting oneself. Stoicism teaches us that living in harmony with our true nature leads to greater peace and contentment. Reflecting this philosophy in the way we use humor can profoundly impact our social connections and our internal well-being. Consider the words of the Stoic philosopher Seneca, who said, A happy life is one which is in accordance with its own nature. Isn't it possible, then, that by cultivating a form of humor that celebrates rather than criticizes ourselves, we could foster a healthier, more authentic way of interacting? Think about the potential transformations in your everyday interactions if your humor began to mirror a positive self-view, promoting real connections rather than serving as a self-deprecating shield. The goal here isn't to suppress your fun side, but rather to ensure that it flourishes in ways that reinforce your self-esteem and overall health. By adopting a stoic approach to humor, we challenge ourselves to avoid using laughter as a means to belittle ourselves and instead to embrace it as a way to enjoy and celebrate life's many quirks. This change could significantly alter your relationships and overall well-being. As Marcus Aurelius, another revered Stoic philosopher, once advised, Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. By adjusting our comedic approach, we not only enhance our social interactions, but also our mental health. Watch how embracing this perspective transforms your life 
encouraging a lighter, more joyful existence that aligns with the best version of yourself. This is the true essence of living a stoic life, not merely enduring the world's challenges but thriving amidst them with humor and grace. By understanding these habits, we not only grasp their impact on our lives and relationships, but also learn how to counter them effectively. Stoicism offers powerful antidotes to these issues, promoting a positive outlook that fosters respect, kindness, and genuine connections. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, famously advised, The best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. In practical terms, overcoming unattractive behaviors means cultivating virtues like humility, purpose, calmness, independence, and a robust sense of self-worth qualities that transform our interactions and improve how others see us. Each behavioral misstep we've discussed is an opportunity to grow and embody stoic virtues that enhance our life's quality. Embrace these teachings and watch as they reshape not only your external relationships, but also your internal view of yourself. As we strive for a life enriched with peace, joy, and kindness, remember that true change begins within. It starts the moment we decide to improve how we relate to others and ourselves. Engage daily with these stoic practices and observe the positive changes they bring to your life. Join our community discussion. Share how you're applying these principles in your daily life. Let's foster a culture that values personal growth and virtue. If you found this discussion insightful, please like this video. Share your thoughts in the comments and spread the word about these life-enhancing strategies. As we wrap up today's video on don't do these five things that make you too unattractive, stoicism, I encourage you to integrate these stoic principles into your daily routine. Reflect on how each step can enhance your personal growth and contribute to a more fulfilling life. Stoicism isn't just about understanding. It's about transformation through action. Now I'd love to hear from you. How are you applying these stoic strategies in your everyday life? What changes have you noticed? Drop your stories and insights in the comments below to help inspire others and build a community devoted to growth and virtue. If you found value in our discussion today, please hit the like button, share this video with friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Stoic in Your Life. For more content that could really make a difference in your journey towards a happier, more resilient self, let's keep the conversation going until our next lesson. Until then, continue to reflect, laugh, and evolve. Your journey towards a better you starts with the steps you take today.